Welcome to Triadelphia Lake in Brighton, Maryland. This lake was formed in 1943 when the Brighton Dam was built. With a storage capacity of 7 billion gallons, this 800-acre lake is well known for its recreational opportunities. But many are surprised to learn that before the dam was built, this was the site of a thriving mill town. The Patuxent River which today marks the northeastern border of Montgomery County, once powered the mills that fueled the economy of the city of Triadelphia. Triadelphia means three brothers. It was founded by three brothers-in-law. They were Isaac Briggs, Caleb Bentley, and Thomas Moore. They married three sisters, Sarah, Hannah, and Mary Brooke, who were the daughters of Roger Brooke, who was a descendant of Robert Brooke, the founder of Brookville. They were all Quakers, and uh, the three brothers-in-law had uh, a special interest in uh, being entrepreneurs. They were forward, progressive thinkers, and they wanted to found a, a mill town. Many uh, towns like this were being founded across the country, and um, so they bought the property in 1809 and started building the town. Caleb Bentley uh, was a surveyor, and so he surveyed the town. In its heyday, between 1809 and the Civil War, Triadelphia was a thriving industrial community. Its cotton, grist, saw, and plaster mills all helped to support a town that was then larger than the neighboring town of Rockville. Well, it was a good time for industry to be starting. The town was formed on the plan of having several different mills all located in one place so that they could all take advantage of the same water power and also interchange um, equipment mechanisms. And the idea was a good one. There were many other towns that were founded like this. Um, Ellicott City is one. But this is the, was the only one that was founded in Montgomery County. But the very same water that fueled Triadelphia also helped to destroy it. The um, management actually changed hands in 1830, went from the three brothers, two of whom had passed away by that time, to Thomas Lansdale, who in 1840 formed uh, the Montgomery Company, which had several of the mills, but not all of them. Some were still in private hands. And uh, then the Civil War came, and mainly during the war, the textile mill suffered because of the lack of cotton, which had previously come from the South. And so at that time, the textile mill pretty much shut down. And then after the war, in 1868, there was this terrible uh, flood, which affected not only this town, but many others. It practically destroyed the whole town. The only mill that uh, survived was able to get going again after the 1868 flood was the grist mill. Thomas Franklin Lansdale took over management of the mill after the death of his father, the original miller. Then, in 1889, water once again contributed to the town's ultimate demise. Well, the Johnstown flood in 1889 totally devastated the town. All the mills that had tried to rebuild up until that point uh, were destroyed. And they never rebuilt after that. The reason was that the whole shift of industry at that time, by the 1890s, industry was using uh, steam power and gasoline power. They were using railroads to transport their goods, and so they were locating next to the railroad tracks. And those industries totally took over from the water-powered mills. All the water-powered mills have died out by the first part of the 20th century. P. Garland Ligon bought the property for farming, allowing farm families to live in the buildings that remained. Roseanne Fone's father managed the farm for Mr. Ligon. She told us it was a happy place to be a kid. But all that changed when, in 1943, WSSC completed construction of the Brighton Dam, 
and the Patuxent filled the reservoir, completely submerging what was left of the town. Only a few things remain from the town of Triadelphia. This graveyard, high on a hill overlooking the town, went untouched. Before the dam was built, Mr. Ligon disassembled some of the buildings and used the stones to build this house, known as home stones. The front stoop was made from one of the millstones. And this bell dates to 1837. It once called the mill hands in to begin their daily work. Now it can be found in front of Sherwood High School in Sandy Spring.